show up. He's going to be demonstrating the new social, which is a federated social platform. And Let me just get set up. So what I'm doing here is um, recording my desktop at the same time that I have the nostril cam running on cheese here. Uh, and Laura was recording, and then George is recording, all at the same time. So I'm kind of hoping that near the, in the near future, I'll be able to combine all four video streams together and create a reasonably slick-looking presentation. So, here's the sink. Hopefully, that will not let us line them all up together um, when we uh, get together. So, new social, um, our title screen, and I don't know if you uh, caught my mailing list message, but I posted my presentation notes uh, that I finished last night, I posted them on the KW website. So if you've downloaded them, you know exactly what's coming, you can go home. Uh, I don't actually have any uh, presentation slides as such, so I'm going to do a really bad thing and just show plain text on the screen um, as I'm doing the demonstration. We'll start off with, uh, with the top thing. Yeah, what's, uh, what's microblogging? Well, I learned from Wikipedia earlier this week that um, microblogging actually began as a tumblog. A tumblog was a stream of consciousness posting. It used to be people created their own websites by hand. They would um, you know, create a, an HTML page and just add to it and uh, put it on GeoCities. And, and that was how people uh, did their blogging back in the old days. A tumblog made it easier just to get that stuff into a single uh, huge web page. Uh, Tumblr, of course, is, uh, is the uh, best known version of that today. But Twitter adopted that idea and reduced the notices down to about 140 characters with the intent of having everybody use their SMS capability on their uh, cell phones to um, actually uh, post stuff. So that was the first micro um, SMS is actually 160 characters, but Twitter expected people would have up to 20 characters for their uh, username. And so they uh, made a message size only 140 characters. And that's sort of become the standard for microblogging nowadays. Round about 2007 or so, Ellen Prodrome from uh, Montreal, he's a, he's a Canadian now, um, came up with um, a, a different system, an open system, a federated system, so that you wouldn't actually have to uh, use the proprietary systems like, uh, like Twitter. And um, he came up with a something called the Open Microblogging Protocol, which later morphed into the Open uh, the o Status Protocol. The o Status API is actually a combination of different protocols, like Adam, uh, Activity Street, and a bunch of other ones, all of which work together to deliver messages, to deliver information about messages, and to deliver um, actions for a different server to, uh, to use. So this is how New Social and Identica before did, their communi did its communication. Um, we send out these activity streams, these uh, streams of messages, which included both the message content and information about the messages, so you could get um, threading and, and, um, and things like that. Um, OStatus has actually been adapted to applications other than just Identica and Continue Social, so you've got uh, a variety of other open sources, uh, the Asper Friendly Cup, something new called Hubzilla, which isn't really an application. But um, it's um, a protocol, a framework for designing your own application. There are some people uh, in the Fediverse that are running it. So the whole combination of everything that uses O status is uh, referred to, at least on Google Social, as the Fediverse. The new social itself has plugins, so uh, you can actually communicate with uh, Twitter and Facebook and things called Jaiku and Plurk, which I never even heard of until last week. Um, Jaiku is apparently dead, and I have no idea what Plurk is. Um, unfortunately, Twitter keeps changing its API, and so uh, the existing Twitter bridge plugin that lets you connect your new social uh, instance to Twitter no longer works. At least it doesn't work reliably enough that uh, anybody's willing to develop for it. You know, as soon as you develop for how Twitter works today, it'll probably stop working next week. I like new social, the entire universe of new social, the Fediverse, because it is People on there are far more like-minded than me. I would like to show you uh, what the actual difference is. So looking at Blake, the um, publishing language. If we uh, go and have a look to see what we get in um, Twitter for LaTeX, oh, sorry, in, in Minnesota for LaTeX, then, um, where were we? Yeah, I want to get that. 
uh, uh, installation date. So, the good news is that, that as long as it's still refresh, oh, it's still refresh. Oh, good. What's happening? Oh. All right, we may have a little bit of uh, troubleshooting here. This is all working fine until I got the phone in the delivery. So, let me just. I'm using my phone for tethering it again, outside internet connection. Because I always want to show you the uh, not safe for work. Um, the not safe for work latex connection. We connect it again. And we're getting the latex and we're getting the old stuff again. Oh, yay! Alright. So there we are. Um, you know, two steps back. Uh, here's our uh, information about LATEC, and then if you're really interested, you can um, go to Twitter, Twitter.com, and do a hashtag. Today I learned that uh, Twitter actually has a hashtag uh, subformula. So look up LATEC, or what I think is LATEC, and we get, we get, we get, we get. We get pliable on <laughs> So, <laughs> enough of that. <laughs> Alright, I um, took a little bit of time and downloaded uh, the tarball for uh, the new social code already. Not that big. Um, I can probably look at that when we get rid of this. I can probably look at that. So, I've actually uh, gone and uh, made a connection to. Um, the server, and I should be able to see in the root folder the existing carbon. So I've actually expanded the carbon. 77 megabytes expanded. It comes with a, a decent file, so it's probably considerably smaller than the download. Unfortunately, I expanded it before I cloned my virtual machine, so all the clones ended up with the expanded uh, tarball as well. But that's fine. We have that there, and I'm going to be working for the most part inside um, a, uh, a text. Uh, CLI environment. It is entirely possible to do all the work from. Um, yeah. It's also entirely possible to do the work from uh, a graphical file manager as well. So if you wanted to do it uh, entirely graphically, if you don't have access to a CLI, for example, on a hosted server, you should still be able to do the installation, but you just have to do it through a graphical interface. But here, I'm going to actually sit and do the expansion. Um, on a uh, CLI. So let's see whether or not we can make this work. Why does that work? Because my mouse is falling down. Okay. okay. Alright, uh, let's see what we've got in the root folder. And there we see the GNU Social uh, Tarball, which I'm going to untar. So tar extract file GNU dash social. They are, and that should create a folder with the same file name. And just taking this time. And then this goes again. Phew, had me worried there for a second. Sure enough. There we go. There's a folder with um, all the new social stuff in it. So let me do a list um, the new social folder and we'll see what's in there. And sure enough, there's all uh, the files that need to do the installation. Most of these files just get copied over to um, whatever folder you're sticking your uh, stuff in. So let's uh, actually go and do that next. We'll um, cd over to the uh, location for the document group for the um, uh, web server, which in my case is www.html. And in there right now, all we see is just an index file. So if you have a quick look at the index file, you'll see that sure enough, it's an HTML file. That's the HTML file that you actually saw right here at um, red.lang. So, this is what you're looking at in source code over here. Life is good. What we want to do is we want to move the existing folder that we just untarred over here. So, move from roots folder 
um, exceptionally ugly. It'd be much nicer if the URL was something like red.land slash .jump. And so the fancy URL support does that. I can't think of a single new social instance that doesn't have fancy URLs in data. Um, something to keep in mind with that, um, once you've got um, a new social installation and it's been talking to other servers uh, on the network, those servers embed the URLs for the message contents in their own databases. So if you, after the fact, go and change the way that things work, for example, you enable fancy URLs after you've got the installation up already, everybody else who's out there who has already received messages from you in their database sees the old style URL, which are no longer um, valid necessarily. So you really don't want to change your mind about how your URLs are structured. And that counts uh, not just for uh, fancy URL support, but also for enabling SSL or uh, security on your system afterwards. If you have HTTP non-secure connections and you change that to HTTPS later, um, unfortunately, a lot of the um, older messages you sent out before break on the other people's servers. And there's no good cleanup available in uh, a happy user that you have to go into the database and you've got to clean up manually. Horrible, horrible stuff. There are countless numbers of sites out there um, where the first message on the instance says, please ignore all my previous instances. This is the one that I'm using now because I've had that in this moment. So don't be one of those people. All right, so let's uh, set up some fancy URL support. I'm going to cheat and just copy and paste this into uh, the Apache configuration. So we're going to copy thing here. Let's copy. To go over here where I look at my installation route on the web.lan. Apache configuration files are in Etsy, Apache 2, and I'm going to do this into the sites available. I have the option of putting that in a bunch of other places, but typically you'll have a uh, virtual server like so. So the new social dot, for example, dot net. And so where you've got your virtual server defined, inside that virtual server is where you want to enable the fans and the OS. There we are using the text browser, we're going to paste that in there and add a comment to tell the text browser comes along. Add it as the URL support and jointly setting somewhere to Good. So now everybody knows why that stuff is there. I'm making it pretty too with both of implementation. Like I know what I'm doing. Save that. And now, because we've changed the configuration file, the Apache server needs to be restarted. So let's go do that here. Um, documentation says you should use a service. I find that on um, the installations, the Apache control command works much better. I usually do a graceful restart so that anybody who's already connected doesn't get their connection ungracefully dropped. So, at this point, you should be ready to actually look at the installation. You just check the cheat notes, make sure I've got done. We start web server, done that part. Oh no, not done that. That's great balance. <laughs> so, um, I'm using um, PHP MyAdmin simply because I'm not a, a good command line on, um, on my SQL. So, go to the red dot line and have a look at uh, PHP MyAdmin. Good news. So, you want to log in as the, uh, the master user for this. What we're going to be doing is creating uh, a user in the database that only has permission to see the new social file. You don't really want to run the entire database, a new social instance, with the root identity. But if something should go wrong with the new social, it has the possibility of deleting every other database that's on your server. There. So, good practice says you go ahead and do that. So, using a password manager, my password manager has the uh, password for the new social demo. So I'm just going to copy that password to the clipboard and paste that in here. You know, you have no idea what password is. All right, we're in. So, here's the existing database. This is a, a vanilla install. There's nothing on here except the uh, stuff that um, came with the, um, the lab installation. You see the database is here. 
or that one thing we don't agree to that. We don't need to call it the new social. I mean, the obvious, right? Obviousness is good. Create that database. The database has been created. And there we see it. So now we look at that and add a user. Uh, in fact, now we go back to the point that we need that from here. One more time. Alright. 
site name, be creative. Because this is running on a server called Red, I'm going to call the site Red. Ah, here's a problem. Fancy URLs should be enabled. So they went through all that process of uh, changing the configuration files and uh, doing the permission. So why is fancy uh, URLs, why are fancy URLs not being detected? This is interesting. Just want to go back and, and check to see what's going on there. So, um, oh, and I, well, that should be the case. So, let's have a look. Let's see about you two. Um, and we want to look at the models enabled. Single user. 
single user means that all you have to do is type in the URL for the server. So in this case, reddit.net or bluesocial.example.net without any suffix for a username, and you get that user. The trouble is, without having a username explicitly defined, you don't have access to the standard at naming convention. Usually you have uh, an at name of like a Bob Johnson. So I'm at Bob Johnson, at symbol Bob Johnson. And to identify myself on this particular instance, I would be at Bob Johnson, at red.lam, or at George, at new social dots, example like that. If you have a single user instance, you don't have a suffix on your uh, URL. So there's no um, red.lam slash Bob John. So then what is your web finger address? Nobody knows. So I do not recommend you set up a single user site. If you want to set up a single user site, set up a community site instead, and don't bother to invite anybody else. Much easier to, uh, to deal with that. Then finally, there's uh, a private site. This is uh, something you can use inside a corporation. The private site does not allow uh, you to send out invitations to anybody else. The administrator has to do the installations. And there's no federation, so this site will not be able to communicate with everybody else. Nobody can look at the public timeline, nobody else can see uh, the messages that are on there, it's entirely private. But we want to create uh, an open site so that we can all log in. So here we are, click on submit. And if things go well, we get a little confirmation message that says things are gone well. <coughs> there we go, that's what it says. Done! Yay! Or saying, well, the other one was a little refresh on. We're done. So if we now refresh this to just the base URL, we should get our new social site up and running. And there we go. Hurrah, we've done a new social installation. If you want to try that on your own instance, you should be able to see that and get yourself logged in. So the first thing I want to do is actually log in as an administrator so I can do some of the site configuration. This is a pretty plain site. I want to set up some uh, initial configuration settings. I'm going to log in as administrator. Password, anybody remember the password? I'm going to click on the number name just because I can. There we go, I'm logged in. So, a bunch of different things that can be done here. There are two uh, headings in the menu at the top of the screen. One for settings, which is uh, settings for your own uh, user ID. An administrative setting, which actually configure the entire site. Some of the stuff we've done already. Some of the stuff we've, um, we had to set up initially when we did the uh, first configuration, the second configuration. But here we have a chance to change our mind. So we can change the site name, for example. Brought to you by um, KW Run Presentation. That shows up someplace in the footer of the text. Brought to you by, well, slash slash, Sadly, you won't be able to get out by clicking on that link, but there you go. Uh, email for um, a link there. Unfortunately, it does not like the local tab. We've got sit here for the moment, but this is not considered to be a valid ad. It's probably because there's no mail server with it. And I can't leave a blank email, so something has to go on there. We'll fix that later. Site logo. Remember when I told, uh, told you you have to get a site logo? Normally you don't find out about the site logo until you get it. But as I recall, the site logo is going to be our KW1 presentation. So KW1, but KW1, but KW1, but KW1. And for some reason, you get a different, um, oh, full URL, sorry, URL. Size for uh, message sizes. 
Now, there's actually a limit on browsers, which only lets you put in something like uh, 65K of text into a single uh, web form. But that's better than a lot of a heck of a lot better than 140. Duplication limit, how long do you have to wait before you can plug the system with other stuff? I'm going to turn that into 300 seconds, which is uh, five minutes, just so we don't um, flood the system with our poor little box here in the handle. So, not a valid email address. Local host is invalid. I delete that. And that's happened to be valid user. Must have a valid email address. So I'm just going to put in my regular email address. And it's just not going to be accessible from here. We jump in the eyes from that. There we are. Set and save. We should now have a site. Let's go and have a look to see what it looks like. Red.plan. What have we got? Up and running. Got a uh, logo in the top corner there. And we should be able to send a message. Traditional first message. Hello world. Send. Beautiful. Logo is posted. Let's have a look at the home page again. And sure enough, the administrator says hello world. Anybody else uh, see this page on their devices? Yep. Excellent. So, there happen to be a couple of other instances that are up and running already. So if you're going to be uh, signing up for um, uh, an account, have a look also at green.com. Green on the line, green.com. There we have a green logo, and also, you want to get yourself signed up for an ID, what you can do is um, put this on the green line. Go over to login, and on the login site, you can um, create a okay, that is log account. Password will be password again, so you can all fool around if you want. Correct username or password. Have already done this? Oh, sorry, I'm doing the wrong thing here. Um, I'm actually trying to log in as KW. I'm going to have to create the account first. So, the registration button is over on the menu on the side. Register first, then log in. KW log in. Password. 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 Email. KW using log in. I can actually access three Green.land? Really? Okay. Anybody else having that problem? Can you access red.land? I get red.land. Well, the same way that Okay. Give me a second. Things. 
I just grabbed a bunch of uh, freely available uh, icons, so pick something random, see what you get. All right, we're out of recycling red, put the presentations, we've done this, we saved this, right? Setting save, and there we are. Some other site uh, configuration you can do over here on the user site is uh, set a bio limit. So when you're typing in the bio, you can set a limit for the uh, amount of size you want there. I don't think you can actually put zero there. That's fine, see what happens. New users, new users welcome. Um, hello, new user. Default subscription, who should you follow on, on this site here? Uh, there's nobody else here yet, so we can make you follow administrator. You will automatically get subscribed to at least one person when you get logged in. And then um, everybody is going to be allowed to send invitations. There we go. Access. So I can change the. Uh, uh, even air messenger, by the administrator, not being allowed to use it. Sorry, what's that? Even air messenger. Ah, probably go to the bio settings here. Yeah. So, uh, do the welcome, welcome. Okay. This is 
not going on. I think I read something by changing one of the paths that should not have been changed. Let's see. You can get back to the CSS. Did I turn on SSH? Or SSS? No, your CSS here, Stout Sheet's gone. Stout Sheet's gone, but the page itself can't be found either. Everything is gone. It's all gone. Welcome to the light, Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does look like a case anymore, doesn't it? All right. Uh, bad things have happened. Bob, I got redirected up. So when I went to the main page, Yes. it rewrote my URL to red.land slash http colon slash slash red.land. So I don't know what I've got here, too. So, um, this is not what I want to happen. And to be perfectly honest, I don't know where to go back to um, to solve that issue. We have somebody who, uh, who does tech support for uh, status and things. Uh, can you go back to the settings page? Probably not. If you hold the back button down there, is it something about settings? Pads? Up at the top of the top? I think so. And take the path and clear that out. Yes. Okay. You're at, yeah, you're at the root of the the server. Yes. And then see, hopefully, see if you can save that. You so might you not also be, just disable the right here. Yeah, temporarily. Yeah. Well, yeah. let's have a quick look to see what I can do. Yeah. Okay. Well, here we are. This is likely stored in the database somewhere. And so we can probably get this fixed. In the meantime, we still have um, green and blue up and running. So we should be able to access those. Um, give me a second here. Uh, copy password. So here we are, um, in the config database. So there's probably this yep. thing right there that's bad. And so this sadly happens somewhat frequently. <coughs> there are many stories of people who have, um, did I can pick this over? There are many stories of people who have had to diddle the database manually. And there's a bunch of people who have created um, tools to clean out the database of stupid errors. Anyway, let's see if that's actually going to fix the problem. Ooh, oh, thank goodness for having <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're back to the back a lot of people. Lesson learned? Don't change stuff if you don't have to. <laughs> Let's go back to the admin page. We'll just finish off uh, going through the, uh, the side here, and then um, drop the spouts. Um, don't be touching those. <laughs> sessions. Here's something else I've never figured out. Handled sessions. I'm not entirely sure um, what those settings are for. So I'm going to leave it. Having learned my lesson in the previous page. Site notice index. Uh, this is a little message that pops up at the top there. So uh, usually this tells you a little bit about the site. The demonstration of a link social event for the relation of the AW blog reading and reason. There we go. Save that. And that should now pop up at the top of the screen. Right there. Every time you see something. This is where you can allegedly change the license. But those are the choices you've got. Private, all rights reserved, or create comments. Uh, I know of no good way to actually change the text of the license that appears on the bottom of uh, on each page. Because you can see here. And with the Creative Commons license. If it's not a Creative Commons license, then um, you probably have to craft your own. So in the first place, I'm not sure 
I guess the, the intent behind this was that um, Evan Pogrom was really insistent on having a free and open installation available. And so um, he insisted that everybody adhere to the Creative Commons licensing for the content of the site. Um, all well and good. I'm not really sure if we can change that to, to something else. We don't want all rights to serve. We don't want private. I might want, say, um, I can do free documentation license. There's no way for me to choose that here. So, leave that be for the moment. Finally, plugins. There are a number of plugins that come with the installation, many of which are actually needed for regular operation. So, I really don't understand why this has been created as plugins because you can't run a new social site without them. There's an activity plugin that uh, gives you some activity information. For example, Bob subscribes to Chris. Um, uh, Bob joined the group. Um, there was, um, I don't know, those, those are the two that I'm most familiar with. Um, we have um, a bookmarking plugin, which I don't really use for anything. I have my own uh, bookmarks that I keep um, in on cloud. Client side URL short. While we can actually have um, URLs being shortened on your own instance, it's a really bad idea because you, if you lose the database to this, then those URLs become unavailable. So if your site should go down and has the URLs um, all encoded like that, other sites that still have those messages in their database, those messages are still accessible in other instances, they won't be able to actually resolve those URLs because your own site is not there. So you're creating a dependency here that you really don't want to exist. Um, I've set up the message size to be uh, infinite, or at least a thousand characters, you should be uh, URL shortening on the instance there. Default layout, um, that's one of the theming plugins, I think. Uh, direct messaging, here's the thing with the new social. Direct messaging is not enabled across instances yet. So while you can send a direct message to anybody who's registered on your own instance, you can't send direct messages to people on other instances just yet. Same goes for private instances. You can't send private messages outside of the system yet. Either. I think it's being worked on. Not a feature that's been uh, developed in, in, in the area yet. Events, another plugin. Um, o status, which is absolutely required for a federation for having sending for sending your messages to other uh, sites. Why that would be a plugin and not a core part of uh, the installation, I don't know. O embed. Don't really know what that is at all. OpenID gives you the ability to log into the site without using a uh, user ID and password. You can use OpenID from another um, installation, like Yahoo Mail, for example. I actually run an OpenID server on my WordPress installation and then have a redirect to uh, my Bob John page. So I can log in anywhere uh, that has OpenID enabled by using uh, sobac.com slash bjohn. Very handy. Doesn't get used much anywhere in the world anymore. But the OAuth is everybody's preferred standard nowadays. Opportunistic queue management. It used to be that in order to process items um, like sending them to other instances um, and retrieving things from other instances, you had to run queue demons in the background. And the queue demons are famous for falling over and dying. So you're constantly seeing on um, the social stuff, people who are kicking their demons, they get these things up and running them. And in fact, I think it was the Q demons running on Identica uh, that ended up being the death of it. Uh, anytime that Evan jetted off to Los Angeles or Tahiti or some other place, the second he stepped on the plane, the Q demons would fall over and the Identica site would be down until he went back home and uh, could kick the demons. So, Michael Wartfeld, who's the current good social developer, uh, created something called opportunistic queue management, which means that anytime um, the page gets refreshed by anybody access accessing the server, there's some queue management that takes place in the background. So you no longer have to have demons running constantly. Uh, the queues get serviced simply by having the pages refreshed. Very handy, but much slower than having queue demons running constantly in the background. However, it's nice if you're on a shared hosting instance where you're not allowed to run demon services um, on PHP. So if you have a uh, shared hosting services, opportunistic queue management is all that we have available to you to make things run. And if you have a small instance, you know, only um, one or two, three or four, maybe even a dozen or so uh, users on your system, 
This is perfect category. that um, you need to have cute humans running in the background. Pooling, we'll get into that in a bit too, along with bookmarks and events. It's uh, a different message type that you can send. Registration as well. The first thing that happens when you have your big social public instance up on um, the web is that the spammers are around. And the reason that they're coming in is because um, big social is actually very good about having things like um, um, feeds, RSS feeds, admin feeds, activity stream feeds, and all of these things can be subscribed to by other instances. So now you can actually have your own activity stream, your own message feed being replicated somewhere else. So what a spammer now needs to do is set up a bunch of um, WordPress sites that look at these feeds and automatically post stuff, and simply post once to your uh, your social feed, and suddenly the entire internet is flooded with make money fast messages. So, for that reason, I'm pretty sure is why the registration uh, problem is this. To stop hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of spammers from coming in all at the same time and registering new accounts. Search, um, I guess it's a search engine strictly for the local uh, system here. Uh, you can have external search engines available too, but um, I've never enabled them in those things. Um, tag subscriptions. It used to be that hashtags were just available on the system, but um, Edward O'Brien Vibber created a um, plugin which allows you to subscribe to a tag. As soon as it was developed for Identica, within months, Twitter suddenly allowed you to create lists and subscribe to lists as well. So, you know, it's obviously a good idea since it immediately got copied by uh, the other guys. And finally, web, web finger lookups. I have no idea what this is all about. So, it's enabled, I'll leave it enabled, but I don't know really what it's good for. There are many other plugins available as well. There's a whole bunch of plugins that sit in the plugin for you. You can have a, uh, a look at them actually. Um, Yes, that's correct. Those are all the plugins that are available and enabled already by default. Um, but I'll, I'll show you the, uh, the whole thing here. And there are dozens and dozens and dozens of plugins available. Some good, some not so good. Um, the trouble is that in order to enable these, you have to modify the configuration file itself. So you have to enable these by adding um, uh, an entry into the configuration array in the config file. I'll show you that in a bit too. But it's quarter after eight at this point. And I think I've probably showed you enough that you should be able to get logged in and run. Unless you actually want to go through um, sending messages on the site as well. And you can do that. And I guess I was going to go through the uh, individual settings stuff as well. So here you can uh, change your bio, you know, stuff that shows up when you're um, when people look at your account and the admin. So location, usual location. You can have tags. Um, so if I'm a, a sysadmin, for example, I can create a sysadmin tag, and then anybody on my system who is tagged with the same tag can all be addressed in bulk. Kind of handy, never gets used much. Um, here's a handy thing. Generally, anybody who subscribes to me, I want to subscribe to them as well. So I usually turn that on for all the accounts that I have in the And I want anybody to follow me without uh, being asked first. And finally, this is a way of, of uh, you know, privatizing your uh, messages, but that's sort of counterproductive because you really want messages that you're posting to be posted visible. So there we go. If I look at my uh, profile now, I should see. There you go. My bio message at the top there. What else do we want? Settings. We'll get settings again. Oh yes, I could change my avatar to something. So, let's choose a file. Um,
there we go. There's a good uh, image to be using. So I'll pick that as my avatar. It's all far too large. That makes sense it's small. How big is this? Megabytes. That's what I'm going to do. Alright. Alright. I'll we'll go back to the usual icon. There we go. That's me. If the picture was any larger, I'd be able to crop it to something smaller. So, um, if you want, just the ugly mug in the center of it, you can do that, crop that. And that's what my icon is going to look like as I, um, as I uh, look. So, when I go again, there's my avatar on the screen. Yay. Other settings, uh, change my password. Don't do that please, because you'll lock me out. Uh, email addresses and the things that you get notified about. Uh, for myself, you should need everything turned on, on and about everything that goes on. This is a URL shortener. Uh, and even though I told it not to use a URL shortener, I put one on anyway, so I want to turn that off. Save that. This lets me uh, configure my open ID so I don't have to actually log in with a username and password any longer. Um, obviously, in this little system that I've got, I have everything available there. And finally, the polls plugin is not showing anything. I don't know why that is. And connections. If you connect to other accounts, for example, there are plugins for uh, Twitter, the Twitter Bridge. There's a plugin for Facebook. Um, there are other plugins that you can get. Those listed connections would appear here. It gives permission to Twitter to access your screen. It gives you permission to access Twitter screen. And those things will be controlled uh, in the panel here if I had any of those buttons um, enabled and configured. So, that should be enough for somebody to get started. Has anybody else logged in yet? Let's have a look. Look at the people list. And see if anybody else has gone, oh, look at that. We have some people here. Chris, there you go. I'm going to subscribe to Chris. Follow him. I'm going to subscribe to Herman. I'm going to subscribe to Kyle. Hi, guys. So if I go back to the screen, the home screen, I should now see, actually what I want to really see is the public screen. I should really see stuff now from um, other people that are on the uh, system. There we go. Oh, look. <laughs> you guys have been busy, not this. <laughs> this is excellent. <coughs> so I've got some people here. Um, we've got the app style addressing. So this actually sends a message from Kiefer to Kyle, because Kyle is addressed with the app K Farwell. Okay. Looks like he's just kicking us up for pizza. <laughs> There's the pizza with green peppers. Hey! That's Tim with his traditional greeting. There's John who's uh, conducting the poll. My goodness, you guys have been busy. I don't think so. <laughs> Look, there's us. This is incredible. <laughs> Thank you. 